So, um, good afternoon and welcome back. I wanted to uh, to touch on the ZB30J project I've been working on recently. Uh, one of the problems with this is that the, the 30J barrels that do come up for sale, they go for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for no reason, uh, other than they're just hard to find now that a bunch of kits have come into the country. And it's somewhat difficult to... Uh, to turn a ZB30 barrel into a 30J barrel because the 30J uses an adjustable gas block. And so how that was done was basically the gas block was moved farther back towards the chamber end on the barrel by about uh, two inches, give or take. So that means that the gas system on the 30J is proprietary to the 30J itself, right? And, uh, I mean, that, that kind of throws a wrench in a lot of people's plans. So I started looking around and trying to figure out how I was going to do this. And I kind of thought about the idea of, you know, quote-unquote sleeving or lining um, a cut barrel section. And uh, a lot of people, if you look online, a lot of people say it can't be done. And, you know, that's, that's how folklore starts. A lot of people say it can't be done. There's, you know, I know Jim Bob tried it and he blew his O-ring out or something like that. Who knows, right? So... Um, the M2 and M3 Browning heavy machine guns chambered in 50 BMG and the M60, some of the, uh, some of the barrels have a stellite liner pressed inside the barrel. There is no welding. There is no epoxy. It is purely a press fit. So what that is, is that the stellite liner in the M2 and M3 is about 12 inches long, give or take. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but it is there specifically as a an extremely wear durable material, same on the M60, um, to prevent throat erosion in the muzzle during sustained fire, right? And the way that this was done is that first the barrel blank is drilled all the way through, and then the area that needs the sleeve is drilled wider, obviously, to accommodate the sleeve. The sleeve is, it goes through all of its machining processes, blah, blah, blah. It is cooled in uh, nitrogen I believe it is and then the barrel itself is heated in a furnace and I obviously this might be like a trade secret but I don't know what their interference fit is I would assume it is incredibly tight if they've got to shrink this in uh, liquid nitrogen and then throw the barrel in a furnace but anyways after that's done it is just literally pressed straight into the throat of the barrel um, half of the chamber is actually on that um, that liner, the, the neck end of the chamber is on that liner. And then uh, it is simply retained by a threaded plug in the back of the barrel uh, that has the rest of the chamber in it. So if they can do it with 50 BMG, my thought was I can do it with 8 millimeter, right? So what I ended up deciding on was I got a couple of different sections of barrel and then um, I did some measuring. Uh, figured out the min and max on both the chamber and the muzzle end of the 30J barrel and then the min and max on the uh, muzzle and chamber end of this Mauser barrel, uh, M2447. It's only fitting that a Yugo gun gets a Yugo barrel inside of it, you know, whatever. And I decided that 600 thousandths would be a perfect bore to throw in here and then a perfect size to uh, to turn this down to and press it in, right? So how that was done was... Um, these were, well, first, these are two separate sections of barrel. Just like that, right? So these were first put on the lathe, trued up, obviously, on each side. And then uh, they were drilled all the way through 1930 seconds with this lovely gigantic twist drill. Just like that. And then both sections were reamed uh, specifically to 600 thousandths in a floating reamer holder. Just like so. Boom. And that way, when it comes time, uh, which should be this weekend, uh, this is going to get turned to 603 to 602. And then this will be thrown in a deep freezer. And then these two pieces will be put into a, an oven. Obviously, I don't have liquid nitrogen or a furnace. So that will effectively shrink this barrel and then let these expand just enough to press them in. Once they're pressed in, these two halves are aligned. Obviously, you got to align the gas port with this because this is the timing mark on the receiver itself. Gas tube, gas system, whatever you say, is timed up to this mark as well. But after that's all pressed together and aligned, these two pieces go back together. 
the weld seam is going to be right there on that very edge. I mean, I tried to make this look as invisible as possible. Just like that, it'll be welded there. And then the muzzle end will probably get just a little itty bitty ring of weld right there, or maybe some silver solder. And the chamber end will get a little bit as well, and face off on the lathe, and the extractor recut, and then the chamber recut. And then there's a ZB30J barrel. So that's how the process works. That's how I figured out how to do it. And we're going to see how it works out. So, you know, um, if this works out, like, exactly how I want it to, this might be something that I would consider offering in the future, depending on a lot of different factors. But this might be, uh, this might be something worth exploring for other people. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But thanks for watching. Happy building.